A timeline of the explosive lawsuit alleging a White House link in the Seth Rich conspiracy NPR's David Falcon Flick reported Tuesday morning on a lawsuit filed by a man named Rod Wheeler that makes a remarkable claim. The Trump White House, or President Trump personally, may have been aware of or involved in a discredited Fox News story about the killing of a Democratic National Committee staffer last July. It's a complicated story that, we hasten to add, is based on allegations in a lawsuit filed by a person whose quotes in that discredited story were themselves discredited. But the lawsuit includes documentary evidence, like text messages, and Falcon Flick was given access to recorded calls that bolster the story as presented. What's more, the lawsuit is predicated on Wheeler's assertion that he never said the quotes attributed to him. Given the complexity of the story, we've taken the details in the lawsuit and arranged them as a timeline. First, though, it's important to understand the cast of characters. Rod Wheeler Wheeler is a former DC homicide detective who now does private investigation work. Wheeler has been contributing to Fox News for more than a decade, even through this weekend. It's Wheeler who's filed the lawsuit, as will be explained below. Ed Butoski, a wealthy businessman who strongly supported the candidacy of Donald Trump and makes frequent appearances on the Fox Business Network. BuzzFeed profiled him earlier this year. Malia Zimmerman, a reporter for Fox News. Seth Rich, a former Democratic National Committee staffer who was killed last year. This is where the timeline begins. July 10, 2016 Rich is shot to death in Washington during what D.C. police describe as an attempted armed robbery. The case remains unsolved. July 22, 2016 WikiLeaks releases a batch of emails stolen from the DNC. That Rich was killed shortly before these files were released eventually spawns conspiracy theories about the possibility that Rich may have been involved in a plot to release them that ended in his murder. U.S. intelligence agencies dismissed that idea. Their evidence suggests that the DNC network was accessed over a long period of time by two different Russian government agencies. As early as the summer of January 20, 2015, 2017 Trump is inaugurated as president. Butoski reaches out to Rich's family to offer to help fund an investigation into their son's death. They agree. At some point before or during February, Butoski apparently speaks with veteran journalist Seymour Hirsch, who Butoski says indicated a link between Rich and the FBI. Hirsch told Folken Flick it was gossip and that Butoski took two and two and made 45 out of it. February 23, Butoski allegedly texts Wheeler to pitch him on pursuing the rich investigation. The text the two speak on the phone. Butoski, Zimmerman and Wheeler meet for the first time. Wheeler indicates that he's surprised Zimmerman is at the meeting. Butoski later introduces Wheeler to the rich family but allegedly asks that he not mention the link to Fox News. March 14 The Rich family retains Wheeler to investigate the killing, paid for by Butoski. April 18 According to the lawsuit, Butoski allegedly texts Wheeler to ask him to join a meeting with White House Press Secretary Sean Spicer. The lawsuit alleges that Butoski explained the reason for the meeting as to keep Spicer abreast of the investigation. Butoski and Wheeler meet with Spicer. Wheeler's lawsuit claims that Spicer was given a copy of the outline of Wheeler's investigation and asked to be kept updated about it. Spicer later acknowledged the meeting to NPR's full conflict. It had nothing to do with advancing the president's domestic agenda, and there was no agenda, Spicer told full conflict. They were just informing me of the Fox story. April 25th Wheeler meets with a D.C. detective investigating Rich's murder, who indicates that he has no evidence that the killing was anything other than a robbery. Butoski allegedly sends an email to Wheeler saying that if the detective doesn't help, we will go after him as being part of the cover-up. May 9th Trump fires FBI Director James B. Comey. May 10, Butoski and Zimmerman allegedly call Wheeler and inform him that they've identified an FBI source who can confirm emails between Rich and WikiLeaks. May 11, Zimmerman shares a draft of her story with Wheeler. It doesn't include quotes from Wheeler about that FBI link. May 14, Wheeler claims that Butoski had repeatedly made remarks about how the White House was paying attention to the story. On May 14, Butoski calls Wheeler and leaves a message that Wheeler shared with Folken Flick. A couple of minutes ago, Butoski says, I got a note that we have the full attention of the White House on this and tomorrow let's close this deal. 
He then texts Wheeler to inform him that Trump read Zimmerman's article and wants it published May 15 The Washington Post, continuing a second week of scoops about the Trump administration, reports that Trump revealed classified information in a private May 10 meeting with the Russian foreign minister. Zimmerman informs Wheeler that her story is going to be posted shortly. She asks Wheeler for quotes on specific topics, neither of which relates to the alleged source at the FBI. With the story set to publish, Butowski allegedly emails Wheeler and the hosts and producers of Fox News Fox and Friends. He reinforces a key point of what he hopes to accomplish, undercut the idea that Trump's election was aided by Russian interference. Emphasis is from the lawsuit. May 16th the story goes up on Fox News website. It includes quotes from Wheeler about the FBI source that he claims in the lawsuit he never gave to Zimmerman. In a recording of a three-way call that day with Butowski and Zimmerman provided to Folk and Flick, she seems to acknowledge that. Not the part about, I mean, the connection to WikiLeaks, but the rest of the quotes in the story did come from Wheeler, she says. Butowski tells Wheeler, one day you're going to win an award for having said those things you didn't say. Zimmerman says that her superiors at Fox News told her to keep the quotes. Wheeler had first called Butowski to complain. Butowski allegedly pointed the finger at the White House. Q. Sean, can we get a White House reaction or the President's reaction to the report that said Rich was emailing WikiLeaks before his murder? Mr. Spicer, I don't, I'm not aware of, generally, I don't get updates on DNC, former DNC staffers. I'm not aware of that. That night, Wheeler appears on Sean Hannity's Fox News program and supports the story, though he claims not to have personal knowledge of a rich WikiLeaks link. May 17 the local DC station reports that Wheeler was backtracking on the statements attributed to him, including statements made on air. FOX5 DC, you have sources at the FBI saying that there is information Wheeler, for sure FOX5 DC, that could link Seth Rich to WikiLeaks? Wheeler, absolutely. Yeah. That's confirmed. May 23rd, 